So I'm going to call the meeting to order at uh, uh, of the uh, Deerfield uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee at 537. And um, I guess the, I, guess, I think what we should do is just uh, um, is uh, uh, talk to John about his proposal uh, for the HVAC update in the police department. And then he, uh, then we can move on with the rest of, with the rest of our meeting. And um, so. Um, you know what, Jack, it would take two seconds to approve the minutes. I make a motion oh. to approve the minutes. I'll second that, Carolyn. And are you making a motion to approve the minutes of both February 8th and February 17th? I can do that, yes. And, and a second for that? Yes, I'll second, Jeff, will second that. All in favor, I, Jack Davey. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Jeff Upton. I, Mark Redden. And I'll have to abstain. Okay, so the minutes are approved. Yeah, that way it's out of the way. We don't have to worry about it. Right. Okay, so John, we um, we were um, considering your your proposal, and I guess our um, our question is that it, it seemed as if um, you were requesting fifty thousand um, dollars. Um, but you weren't exactly quite sure of how you were going to spend it. It was either going to be for an en engineering plans or maybe for mini splits. And so um, we wondered if maybe you could ex expound on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm more than happy to. Good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for the invite. Can we first start off quick by just touching base on last year? In the fall special town meeting, you folks were kind enough to uh, endorse $35,000 to replace the mobile data terminals for all the cruisers. Uh, two weeks after fall special town meeting, we received the grant for $36,000. So that money will in fact cycle back into free cash. That account will go uh, unexpended. Yep, and June 30th, July 1st, it will roll into free cash. So, but I do appreciate everybody's support in the fall. Last year, you also, approved $23,000 for us for what's called data migration. Data migration was all our old police records, 25 years worth on an old server that need to be migrated into a new database system under the public records law. So that contract was signed, it's on state bid. They're supposed to start to work on that in April and hopefully conclude in June. So I appreciate the board support with that. That way we have that historical record there and it's preserved in the new server for an additional 20 years. So highly appreciate that. One of the issues we faced, um, I've now been chief for now approaching nine years. Our police station was built in 1996. We moved in in 1997. The day we moved in, the HVAC system was not working uh, as well as it should. Every summer we have to put a dehumidifier in there because the building is on a slab. The system, uh, it, is unable to keep up when it's more than 90 degrees outside and humidity will ultimately take over. The system itself will actually freeze up. Um, I walked Jeff through the building the other day, showed him the whole building, showed him what happens. We, when it freezes up, have to walk out back and shut the condensing unit off. We then have to let the fan circulate for 45 to 60 minutes while the building goes up over 100 degrees. But what happens is that block of ice that's now in the air handling unit upstairs will melt. It goes through the upstairs floor, along the floor joist, the supporting I-beam, and we're replacing ceiling tiles two, three, four times every summer. And no matter what we do, it's inevitable every single summer. I don't know if the system is undersized. I'm not an HVAC engineer. So when I submitted the $50,000, I ultimately noted on there, there's two different things we can do and we can do them in concert with each other. We can look at putting one or two mini splits in and taking some of the volume off of that larger system and see if that larger system will last us another five or 10 years. 
the flip side to that is it's, uh, if my words are correct, I'd have to go through my form. It's an R22 system, which is not ecologically friendly. They are no longer made. So if one of those condensing units in fact fails, we basically are without air conditioning and that building is going to be 100, 110 degrees in the summer. Um, and unfortunately, when you deal with police officers in uniforms and bulletproof vests, air conditioning is just a must. It's one of those things that even in 1978, federal legislature mandated air conditioning and cruisers before it was even popular, merely because of that fact. Uh, it's just one of the things, even if it gets cold in there during the winter, we can throw on a jacket, operate 55, 60 degrees if the heater goes down, not an overt deal. But when it's 100 degrees in a bulletproof vest and you got sweat pouring off you in a uniform, you just can't function in there. Right. So there's two different thoughts. One of the thoughts is, and, and Jeff and I batted this back and forth the other day, is this summer, this early fall, have Casey and I uh, put out a... Um, a notice to hire a HVAC engineering firm to come in and uh, ultimately bid out a new system. There's a front system and a back system. The front covers the main office areas. The back system covers the locker rooms, the booking room and the jail cells. Um, and then ultimately see what that bid comes in at, or maybe they can give us an estimate how much to engage an engineering firm that does HVAC work, I don't know. Uh, I, I should reach out and get at least a couple bark, ballpark estimates. I just don't even know who to reach out to for the ballpark estimate. So the request was kind of, it was to bat the ideas back and forth with the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to go, do we want to try a couple mini split units? Do we want to just ultimately go out to an engineering firm and see if we can resolve the problem permanently with a new system that's ecologically friendly, that's hopefully um, more financially supportive where it's, it's not chewing into the electric budget co uh, constantly. And it actually works well. It cycles the air in there. Like well, I said, we can go the mini split route. We can do a modified route. We can look at, you know, just going the route of, the firm itself. And I'm wide open for ideas. It, it seems to me that it makes more sense to replace the whole system because the mini splits aren't really gonna do the job um, by themselves. And um, the, the R22 system, as you say, is not gonna be serviceable or if it is, it's gonna be incredibly expensive. And, it, and in any case, it doesn't work anyway. So. I, I guess I my my fe my feeling would be to try to find an engineering firm or an H or an HVAC firm with and and um, you know get an estimate for get an estimate or estimates for um, replacing the whole thing. Yeah, I would agree as well because it's actually a public health issue in the sense that you get mold and mildew and, yes. and um, if we have anybody. Uh, in a jail suit, you know, arrested or in our cells, you, you have to have them in the proper um, conditions. So, I mean, it is, and, and if we don't get certified, you know, they, we get shut down by public health anyway, the Massachusetts public health. So um, it's actually something that we have to do or will have to do. So Jeff, obviously, uh, I don't, um, Denise? I'm sorry, I know I'm a guest, but I'm just wondering, how, um, you can check into Mass Save. I think they do do assessments for commercial buildings. Yeah, that's and they, do have, they do have rebates. So, Absolutely. I'm, I'm yeah, and it's free for them yeah. to not do that assessment. If it's free, I'm all about it. Yeah, I would definitely get in touch with them. They're great. They give us credit towards that, I'm all about it. Yes, yes Jeff. Are you the planning board rep? Uh, well, I'm not yet. I'm just a guest tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't. I uh, may be a planning board rep. I hope so. I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't know what to. I didn't know whether to uh, introduce Denise or not because she hasn't officially been uh, appointed. Well, and uh, I don't know. Anna Lee thought that that you would uh, join us for this meeting, Denise. Yeah. To see what we're doing and I don't know after you saw that maybe you don't want to do it I don't know. 
I would be thrilled to do it, Jack. Okay, all right. Well, we'll be happy to have you. Okay. Thank you, Denise. I, I thought you were already got a hook into you, so. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Why not? <laughs> thank you, Denise. Okay, so well, Jeff, well, do you, you have your thank hand you, up? Denise. Yes, yes, John. Uh, walking through walking through the building the other day with the chief and that and and I do have a little bit of a building background but um, I'm not an H HVAC uh, expert but if if we were looking at that building and they're only going to be there for two three years and we're going to do something different with the building that'd be one thing but it, it, from the looks of it and from everything that I've heard so far and obviously we have a meeting with uh, Julie as far as the building committee this Saturday, I believe it is, uh, that provide a little more insight. But it seems like the police station is going to be staying and it could be staying there for another 20, 30 years. I myself, I concur with everybody else. I think it would be a very wise move to take a look at this entire system and try to address it. Because some of some of it is out of date, and if it, if there are issues with it, uh, as pointed out, the R twenty two, that's not going to fly. Uh, can't be used nowadays, and that. So I think I think smart money, wise money, would be to have it have it assessed and see what we can come up with for a permanent fix. So, so far from what people have spoken, um, basically I agree with, with everything that's been said. Thanks. So, so does that mean that we maybe table this request and, and ask John to do a little research and do another, and then we entertain another request? Uh, I, my, only I have... my only concern, with that, Jack, is will will the police station be able to limp through uh, until we get this done? Right. And I a... don't know. You know, maybe Chief could uh, speak to that. But I would hate us to hate to see the police station get caught uh, and come up short on this issue. That's a good so point. I, what do you think, John? Yeah. Uh, I can address that, but Mark, you had a question first, if yeah. you want to go. Well, yeah, yeah that, that's a, exactly what my question was going to be. I, I, I don't think you're going to be able to get a new system redesigned and implemented for the summer. Um, and that, that brings us to how, how do we solve the problem for the, the hottest months? And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how this would work in a municipal building, but, you know, I, I have an IT background and I've had to uh, work on uh, this same issue for data centers. And in, in those cases, we've had to, there's actually commercial portable air conditioners that you can lease. Um, and, you know, I, I wonder if, if we should be discussing um, possibly getting that to, to bridge you through the, the short term to um, when we can get this uh, new system designed and implemented. Yeah, so in Casey can confirm this, I don't disagree with you. As part of the public bidding law, the first thing that we have to do is advertise this in the central register because we're doing substantial uh, construction and renovation to a building. So it's got to go out to public bid. And then firms that have HVAC backgrounds can actually, once we put the bid specs in the central register, can actually bid to redesign our HVAC system. So this is actually substantial work from Casey rewording this uploading it into the central register, going through a bidding process, we could engage a firm for $19,000 or, or $42,000 just to design the system, or it could come back at 9,000. I don't know. That's, and there's no way to tell until you advertise it in the central register and you actually right. get a firm on board. Now the firm's gonna design the system and they're gonna give us the bid specs. And we actually, bid the project out. But when they do that, they give us a project estimate. So what we do is we work with that firm through September, October, November of this year. We figure out a rough amount of money. We come back to capital in 23 or 22, if you will, but for fiscal 23. And we submit an additional request to actually complete the project itself. And this summer, we can try and limp it along. I'm not opposed to that at all. We've been dealing with it for 23 or 24 years. 
and we'll replace some more ceiling tiles. We'll, we'll put the dehumidifiers in. Um, and we'll try and limp it along. And if we have to de-ice it, we'll de-ice it the same way we always have. And we'll cross our fingers. Should we order a portable unit? I don't know. Maybe we should. It, if they're in stock at places and I can get one within a day, maybe we just risk it. You know, I don't want to spend money we don't have to. So, but I well, think- Well, yeah, whatever uh, companies, you know, proposing this may, may be able to tell you where to get a commercial one. Because the, the portable air conditioners for commercial, it's a totally different game than, you know, what you'd have in a residential unit. Yeah. Yep. So that's my thought. And I, I apologize, Jack. I wish I knew a rough estimate it, in the central register, if a company bids on this to redesign our HVAC unit, if I literally had a ballpark to say, hey, listen, I think it's going to be 21000 mm -hmm. I'd lower this request to, to 25 or 30 and call it a day. I don't know. I really well, don't. So, um, so if we leave the request at the 50000 and it comes in at 20000 then it, it just... Um, it's just 20,000, right, Casey? It's yes. Not... Yep. yep. Yeah. We, we can reallocate the money towards the project as part of the right. next right. article, or we could just let it cycle back into free cash, whatever Casey and Brenda would prefer. Casey, was I wrong about the central register? No, you're not wrong about central register. It is a little, you have to do other notifications, but that's the main access point. Nothing's easy with municipalities. I no, mean, it's not, especially we, with a bid process. Yeah, we can't just call Buildings are very complex. Yeah, we can't just call a commercial large scale HVAC company and say, hey, can you give me a quote? Right. And then get a, a second or a third quote and say, okay, we're done. You can't do it. No. Yep. Especially with design involved. And all those lines have to come out. I'm told that because it, they're going from R22 to the What's the new system, Jeff? Is it R40 or something? All those lines have to come out and be replaced all the way through the, the roof of the building into the side? Yeah, maybe Mark will know uh, what they're using now. I can't remember off the top of my head what, what's uh, required now for, for the uh, coolant. But uh, yeah, they would probably have to go through the entire system with that. Yeah, Mark, even when Deerfield you, Academy comes to service it for me, they're like, you realize these condensing units, we're not even supposed to be recharging them? I'm like, ugh. <laughs> just, can you just that, recharge it for is, me? Well, you're not alone. Right. That is you're true. And anywhere. maybe Mark Mark can maybe shed some more light on it with his with some of his background. Yeah, well, well it was, server cooling is a little different than, than, than how you would cool a... Uh, a municipal okay. um, police police building, but uh, yeah, I, I I do know that um, you know time, times have certainly changed, and I wouldn't be surprised if you had to rip it out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Yep. And I would invite any of the members that want to stop by and just walk through the police station. I'm more than happy to have you look at it. I'm more than happy to have you look at the building as a whole. Yep. You can look at the locker rooms. You can look at all the renovations we've done. Anything you want. More well, than happy to have you. We might like to have a, a field trip to see the to view the parking lot. Sure. And uh, this this is a question for Casey. Does that mean we have to if we did that, do we have to post a meeting? At, at what point is something like that? Does something like that become a meeting? I think for purposes of being careful, I would suggest you post a meeting because if as you're talking, if you're making decisions and you're not doing it and within a, an open meeting, then you're violating open meeting law. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be yes, post a meeting just in case. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, so do we have any more questions for, for John at this point? No, I'd make a motion to approve um, this expenditure. Oh, we're waiting till the yeah, end. Yeah, we're, wa we're waiting. We're waiting. <laughs> Yeah, okay, sorry. I forgot that. But I, I, I think we clear I think we I think we clarified yeah. what what what's happening. So okay. So at the moment we're just gonna put this request on hold. Is that what you're saying, Jack? Well well we're just we're just going to you know, we're just gonna vote on it at, you know, along with all the other requests. We're right. yeah, okay. we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it on the list of 
of current requests and then and then right. we'll formally vote when we um, do them all at the same when time. It, when when we get to the to the meeting okay. where we do everything at the same time. Sounds good. Yeah. And do we want to talk about the parking lot at all, Casey or Jack? Well, I guess if we we have you here and you and we have time, sure. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yep, I know. Uh, Casey and I have been working on. Um, town buildings together with Julie, with Kevin, more of a, uh, a, a collaborative spirit between all of us. And I know how Kate, Casey's so busy with multiple projects. So um, she okayed me putting in the request for the, uh, the town hall police station parking lot. I think, did a lot of you get the drawing schematic, how it's redone or no? Well, well we have like an aerial view. Okay. But yeah. it's not clear to me what part of it is being redone or yeah, so handed or whatever. See if I can jump into my email quick and see if I can actually share my screen and pull it up. And that way we can jump into it. Do, 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 do. I think that's South County's paving. Police. That's the budget. I don't want the budget. All right. All right. Is that up on your screen okay? Yep. Good. So, yes. Can you see my cursor moving? Yep. Okay. So, these, yes. trees, these trees right here are scheduled to be taken out in the next 30 days. Those trees are in very bad shape. This tree over here by our certified arborist that came in and did a full report on uh, request of the select board, the in town administrator identified this tree as savable. This one uh, is going to be pruned up. We ultimately want to create a division between the senior center, future parking lot over here, and take this area out. The brand new arborbites that are over here that we've planted at the police department, we want to move those over here and create our own separate entrance for police and town hall. So everywhere you see in red is all brand new pavement, all the way out to the Butler building, which we gutted that. We put in all brand new shelves out there. We had it painted. We put in a new garage door. Deerfield Academy assisted us with a lot of that work. Um, all the way through over here. So this parking right where the cruisers sit now is gonna come out. That actually would be an entranceway. And over here is gonna be the actual police parking in this area. If we are able, as part of the identified plan with Julie, the town buildings advisory committee, our kitchen is right here, right where you see my cursor. This is where we want to put a side employee entrance. Right here's the current entrance to the police station that goes right through jail cells in the booking area. So when there's a prisoner in there, the midnight shift is texting the day shift coming in to be careful because there is in fact a prisoner in booking. So we want to put an entrance in over here. This whole area would be paved over the grass. So we'd have four parking spots right here We'd have a brand new entrance way in over here. We'd have overflow parking all out here. Town hall staff would be able to park out here, as well as several expanded spots over here as well. So everywhere you see in red was the actual estimate. Last year, I think it came in at about 131,000. Jimmy Houle told me to add in like three or 4%. He said maybe 135. So I put the request in for 140, just in case we do hire an engineer like we did at South Deerfield Fire to do a true bid spec for us and monitor the project. I know it made our life a lot easier at South Deerfield Fire when we just redid the parking lot. So more than happy to answer any questions. We've actually talked about eventually putting gates in here because during a ball game, this whole thing overflows. So we've talked about putting a gate in here and a separate gate over here 
but that is not part of this bid. That's kind of a down the road thought between Casey and myself. More than happy to entertain like any questions you have. Okay, so this looks like a much more extensive thing than I, what I had in my mind. Yeah, that's the big price tag. I, South Deerfield Fire came in, I think we were right around the same cost. I think we were at about a 160 for South Deerfield Fire. And I think this one came in at 131 last year. You told me to hover about 135 for this year. So I put in for 140. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions for John? I don't have any questions as far as Jeff, but I do have a comment. And, and I think with the paving in that, with the future uh, relocation of an entry door, it just makes a whole lot of sense. It'd be much safer for everybody as far as access to that police department. So that's the only thing I'd say about it. On a meeting. Yep, and if you look, here's the actual budget from uh, Warner Brothers. This was, um, there's their quote number. I'm trying to take a peek when uh, Jimmy sent this to me. But 129,810. And I know it was just about a year ago. Oh, March 11th, 2020 was the date on it. He's uh, he's really on the ball. He uh, he he did my uh, lot at work. And oh, Jimmy's did, great. They did a he, he was really great, and they did a fantastic job. Yeah, they just finished South Deerfield Fire for us. They do amazing work. His wife is the uh, town clerk in Sunderland. Wendy's amazing. So yep. Okay, so. Um, Uh, I have one other question. Um, are there any drainage issues or anything in those areas where we're looking to pave that we don't have existing pavement on? And if so, does this include any kind of drainage plan? That ultimately would be part of what an engineer, that's why I put in the, the extra $5,000 would look at and make sure because I know South Deerfield Fire, we had to deal with several different issues. So I would wanna bring somebody in in advance and have them review it even after a rainstorm. Okay. It's a great question, Mark. And what kind of soil do you have over there? Is it clay like everything else in Deerfield or? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great farm soil. You, the first six to 12 inches is amazing soil below that's all clay. So it holds everything. That's our high so, water table in the Valley. Do you get any standing water over there now? Like near that building that we're looking to connect or? No, I mean, the only no. reason we do is, um, is again, poor drainage. We do, and there's some low points. Yep, where it's gravel and it's just divoted down that, that two to three inches and the water just sits there. So, but that's actually identified more as the senior center project than it is actually the, um, the police department and the town hall project. So let's uh, just for giggles, we'll peek really quick if you have time at the senior center one. It's right there, share. And there's the preliminary outline. However, we don't know what we're doing with the senior center yet or senior housing. So this was just a preliminary from Jimmy on what we could do with the senior center to expand a ton of parking over here, but clearly delineate the parking with this area shut down in between. So we would take this whole area out. Yep. But we've really got to figure out what we're doing with these buildings first. And I can share the uh, budget with you if you want to see it. That's totally up to you guys. Just if you want to see roughly what that one came in as. Well, that's kind of a, that's kind of another, that's a whole other ball of wax, that whole, uh, the senior center, the senior center project. So yeah, it's not yeah. even worth diving into. I mean, that's, that's way kind out. Of, yep. It's kind of way in the future with a lot of, with a lot of questions and so. 
Yeah. And the, the parking lot, when you do a tour, you will see it's terrible. It needs to be done. It's, it's just a matter of, can we afford it? Uh, do we set half the money aside this year and half next year, or do we just bite the bullet and just do it? I mean, it, when you walk it, you'll know it absolutely needs to be done. It's totally cracked. It's holding water. Um, there's, there's holes everywhere. When we wash the cruisers, you know, there'll be an ice sheet out there. Yeah. It's totally broken up. It's, it's well past its life expectancy. Okay. So, um, so I guess we're going to, we're going to move on to the, to our, our, uh, next request. Thank you very much, John. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You guys have a great evening. And like I said, time swing time. over anytime. More than happy to walk you through the building and even the parking lot. Okay, great. Thanks, Thanks Chief. Thanks, yeah, John. Yeah, yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hi, John. Thank you. Right. Um, I am really apologize. I have to leave for that um, meeting with Joe Comerford. Okay. Now? Um, on Yeah, it's at six o'clock. It's the water and sewer infrastructure meeting. Okay. Uh, we're hoping to get more money. <laughs> All right. Well, that'd uh, be good. Yeah, it would be good. I won't hold my breath, but anyway, we got to at least complain. All right. Well, good you. luck with it, Carolyn. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, Thank you for doing that. I know. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. We'll see you later. Good night. Okay, so do we want to just continue continue along with page two of the uh, like a general discussion of the the remaining um, requests that uh, we didn't get to at our last meeting? That would be Sounds a good good idea, me. Jack. Okay. Okay, so the next one on my list is the trackless broom, the trackless boom mower which is the request from the highway department for $105,000. And um, I, I noticed that on the five-year capital plan, let's see if I can see it. And, and maybe there's a maybe there's a typo, but the trackless boom mower was shown for thirty three thousand dollars plus five thousand dollars for a sweeper. So I don't know if I guess this is a question for Kevin. Is, is it was was that a typo or is it really one hundred five thousand um, dollars? I'm not it's really. It's really one hundred five thousand dollars. It's really it really is okay. It really is yeah. Okay, so I, I, I don't know. I'm not really that familiar with this with this kind of machine, and I guess we should have we should invite Kevin to our next meeting to explain what what this is and what they and what they do with it. So the trackless is actually what they use use to plow the sidewalks, and that machine, if I remember correctly, is completely out of service at this point, and they can't get parts for it. Mm -hmm. um, so the cost has changed since he first itemized his request, I think, which was several years ago. He had a booklet or a binder of, of the request that they expected to see. Um, why don't I ask him to attend the next meeting and he could give you a little more detail about it. But do you have, let me see if I can pull up his. I think we have the request. I think you have the request. I thought. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so they have a 2006 trackless piece of machinery. And it, like I said, it snow blows and plows the sidewalks and sweeps when it's not a snow events. And it has a over the rail mo uh, mower as well. Um, According to what it says. I'm reading, but I'm not reading as fast as you are, Jack. Um, and so so there's a lot of fixes that would happen. If, so he says that you would get a better the sidewalks in the road and yep. also roadside mowing. Yes. 
Yeah, I think this brings up a lot of questions. I, I really do believe Kevin needs to come in so we can figure out because, you know, all of a sudden we're talking roadside mowing and that. And, and I know we have a couple of large tractors with, with arms to do roadside mowing. And so I'm, I'm a little curious as far as what they're talking about as far as that. Larger tractors may not fit along the roadways in town, Jeff, but I'm going to send them an email. Yeah, um, no, and I, and I do, and I do know that we have two of them. But I'm just yeah. all of a sudden, is our current one that is not functioning? Did that have a roadside mower on it also? I don't know. Um, I don't know about the roadside mower piece of it. Right. Yeah, you know, I know, I know it had the broom, the sweeper, and yeah. I know it did the plow and the sidewalks. I'm just wondering if it if it also had a roadside mower to it. I don't know. We can ask him. Right. Exactly. Right. So let's yeah. so let's just uh, plan on uh, having trying to arrange to have him come to the to the next meeting to talk about that and um, the. And, and also, apparently, he's requesting the uh, um, the mini excavator again. So, which I don't know. Last year, when's the next like, meeting, Jack? Um, well, remember? this is uh, I don't I don't know if um, if Wednesday at five thirty works for everybody. And I was actually going to throw out that, um, you know, maybe we're not, we don't necessarily have to be um, tied to, tied to that. I, my schedule's okay. um, flexible enough that I could almost meet any time. So I, I don't know. What, what is Every other think? Wednesday is bad for Carolyn and me because we have select board meetings. Right. So we'd have so to, so we would have to. Next week would be it. okay. The week after wouldn't. Right, so we just have to schedule around that, but I mean, just I mean, just to throw this out, is there anything to prevent us from having a meeting on Saturday afternoon, or you know, or, um, or Tuesday just the morning? Work schedule for the people yeah. that have to that are I'll regular staff. Right, or or like Tuesday morning. Well, Skip, you're probably you're probably yeah, five thirty is before. about the um, earliest in the evening. I yeah. can probably do. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then, so we next meeting next Wednesday at uh, five thirty, same thing. That should Sounds work. good to me. me. It'll work for yep. me. That would be March third, correct? Yes. Uh, Jack, I just have a question. I don't have a um, request form for the mini excavator. You don't because yeah. there was some he, lack of clarity in the office when I sent okay. this out. All so right. yes, he, okay. I'm going to grab last year's. And, and so that's, this is a confusion that Jeff and I had a conversation about during last week's meeting and after the meeting. Okay. <laughs> so I'll watch the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, it was just, it was just the, the confusion was really just over whether Kevin needed to submit another, another another form and wow. another request and um you know it's he 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 commented in one of our previous meetings that he was going to request it or he wanted to request it and, and that it was like five thousand more now so um but i think it's the same it's basically the same machine and you know that i don't know the committee last year correct me if i'm wrong but there I don't know how to say this, but it sound, seemed wasn't like much it, of an appetite. It seemed like there wasn't, yeah, much support for it. There was kind of a, there was kind of a split. So, um, so I, I don't know. Now we, now that we have new members, maybe there's some uh, some new uh, perspectives <laughs> when we when we discuss that with him. 
Um, and maybe, and, and actually, I don't know, maybe I can dig up Mark and um, Denise, maybe I can dig up the, uh, some information on it from last year that I can send you. So you, at least you have an idea of what, what the thing is and, and what it does. And that's the thing that I had said to Jeff was, I don't have all this documentation. It didn't live in our electronic files. So when I was looking things up that I called, Skip, I called them legacy items, things that were on the schedule, but I didn't have background on. I wasn't able to give it to people because I didn't have it. Right. So, right. Um, and then there was this, you know, I realized what the, what the bylaw says. But all the paperwork that I had access to to regurgitate, uh, to use to regurgitate request, the idea of requests didn't specifically mention a new request each year mm -hmm. for an item that was existing. And so right. from my perspective, I didn't have all the information I needed because I don't I literally don't recreate the wheel every time I write a memo. I use what was whatever existed before. And so that was part of the confusion on my part is if it isn't set out in a memo, I don't know necessarily, even though I've read the bylaws, I don't necessarily know at that moment that it needs to be identified if it was accepted the last year. So there was some confusion on my part. Well, that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll work around it. It's not the, it's not the end of the world. Um, okay. So we're going to get Kevin next week and we're going to discuss the trackless boom mower and the mini excavator. And so the next thing on the next thing on the list is the sidewalks project for five hundred three thousand dollars, which my notes say that's a placeholder for some previous some uh, future year. We put it together to give everyone an idea of what it would cost, some framework to visualize what it would cost to do sidewalks. There's been a lot of discussion in the select board meetings about sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was Kevin went out and asked for some numbers so that we could frame it. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't necessarily happen next year, especially if we have funding issues, which we do. Um, but it gives you an idea of what we can plan to address um, in the next several years, because si there are areas, especially in downtown, where the sidewalks are very deteriorated and should something should be done mm -hmm. so i was asked by the board to develop it and kevin helped me pull the numbers together and i wrote up the request so yes oh. i would call it a placeholder it's not something i would i it's not something be something i don't know that i don't know whether we can fund it really all right well we can put it on our five-year plan and on our spreadsheet and then then it's there and Everybody knows. And we had split that. different things out, like sections out. What the first request is 500, the second is 120 something. I'm not looking at the spreadsheet in front of me right now, but it's Casey? definitely. Yeah. Quick question: uh, sure. Is this something that uh, streetscape money would qualify for? If quite possibly, we... I'm not sure. I don't have a streetscape plan in front of me, but yes, it possibly could. Okay. So that's something that we could possibly pursue from that angle yes. as far as some grant money? Possibly. And can oh, we do this okay. in second? Well, at least we that. take a look at it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, could this be done in, in sections where we only do certain sections of Elm Street and, and certain yes. sections of Main Street instead of just doing it all at once? If you read the estimate, it actually is in sections. It's just, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how to parse things through and I I also am not Kevin so I don't sit down and parse things through in sections for asphalt paving and stuff you know we got the estimate if you look back in the the capital request the estimate does show sections it's just when I pulled it together I thought I thought differently than people who do that thing yeah I'm, I'm looking at it now um I used to do concrete a really, really long time ago too. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around why like we wouldn't just <laughs> yeah. do it in sections. Yeah. In yeah, you could. Well, I, you could. I think, I think there are some, I think there's some economies of scale when you do it all at once. You know, the all the equipment comes to the job site. Mobilization, of, demobilization. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. All, you know, all the asphalt and the, the um, concrete comes 
comes at once the crews there and they you know i watched them do it they did a project like that around our business in northampton and they they just went to town they just and and it was actually it was actually amazingly fast um and it was it was very it seemed to be a very efficient way to do it to do the whole the whole thing at one time but it makes more sense to do it that way but often we run into the funding issues so issue. that's why you'll see sections of paving done in increments right um but for purposes i don't know if anybody saw what happened in waitley last year waitley did a similar type of sidewalk project right around the waitley inn so it's the center yeah. of town yeah and they did it there was like three different periods where we saw the mobilization of the trucks and Taylor, Taylor Construction actually did that work along with the town um, crew. So there were periods where you would see a flurry of activity and then periods where it was quieter and there was prep work that the highway crew was doing or prep work that Taylor was yep. doing. But ultimately when it was done, it took, I would say three months. It was fairly quick. All right, so let's move on to the, the next item is the uh, senior center needs assessment, which, which um, my reading of it is that it's, uh, it's like a survey of town residents in terms of what they would like to see in a senior center. And I don't know, to me, it seems like a lot of money to do a survey, but what do I know? I know the, uh, Jack, I know the building committee that uh, Julie uh, chairs, they are going to meet, I believe this Saturday. And I think there might be some more clarification on that mm -hmm. as far as, again, further discussion on that whole campus in those buildings. So that might add a little more clarity to that. Well, so yeah, but I think this... I think this request though is for is is to survey town residents in terms of what they want to see in a senior center, not necessarily what kind of what what upgrades to the building or buildings right. or the building should be. Right. You know. But I know I know the building committee ran some surveys previous and I'm just wondering if if there's information already existing or if there's something that just needs to be updated. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and, and as I say, I don't, what do I know? I, you know, may, maybe it is a good thing. Um, I, I recall when I was in a meeting with the, the library, the library um, committee the library, new library committee, and they said, well, we, you know, we're librarians. We know what a library, sh library should be. And, you know, it, I took from that that they, they didn't really want our opinions. I, and I don't mean that in a, in a disparaging way. I don't, I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but, you know, basically they were saying that, and it made, it made sense. They were the experts. They knew how a library works and, you know, they would they would design it to all right satisfy well, I, the, satisfy the public's needs. You know, and I I don't know. It seems like this is kind of the same thing. I, well, I, I I yeah I I think I think the I think they'd be looking for some input from the residents that are, mm -hmm. are or would be using it, and you know it's it's who's to determine a, a senior center. Right. My 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 ideas and opinions of a senior center could probably be a lot different than some of our select board members. But well, yeah. But, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know what makes a senior center work well. And you know the the average the average citizen on the street do they know what makes a senior center work and and serve the community? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't think so, and that's why I think it's been such a contentious issue for us in our town. It's it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest hot button issues. Um, with the packet that we have, it says this is going to go for demographic analysis, focus groups, and peer comparisons, and it probably would be good considering how con uh, how controversial this topic mm -hmm. is 
you know, for us to, to do this study. Uh, so we have something objective we can point to um, when we make future decisions, especially for, you know, big capital improvements in the future. So well, I, think I, we, I think that, yeah, and I think that's a good point that you have an independent, an, an, an independent assessment and then it, it takes away some of the controversy. Um, so I don't know, but in, in any case, Casey, that's something that, that uh, is on the agenda for this year. And so this is a twofold proposal and the needs assessment would be a social and demogra a demographic research project to determine what services seniors want. And keep in mind, the senior center is a con collaboration of three towns. So three towns had to sign on to the concept of this, um, which happened. The results could then be used to develop a framework to conduct the second piece of it, which is a feasibility study on the use of the building to better deliver services. And so we had an estimate for the needs assessment. It's broken down by community contribution. And for the senior center, unlike SCAMS, for the senior center, Deerfield pays 50% of the cost, Sunderland and Waitley each pay 25. <laughs> so the first portion of this is the breakdown of the needs assessment cost, which is for Deerfield would be 17.5. The second piece is the feasibility study which go, goes toward the use of the building um, or buildings or however you frame that. We don't know yet. We've got GRLA study, but now we need to know how we fit senior services into what's existing. Um, so the second piece of it, the feasibility is estimated to cost between 30,000 and 50,000, depending. They usually cost around 50, but don't quote me. We, and we being mostly John, but the two of us talked about it and it's somewhere in that neighborhood. So if Deerfield's paying 50% of that cost, um, you could expect to pay between, um, or plan to appropriate between 15 and 25. So the kicker in this is John reached out to the COG and this was before they have this, this grant program that they call the district local technical assistance funds. Right before we got the notification that we were going to get, that the COG was going to get this, this grant, um, John reached out and talked to them so that we could see if we could get some help from them to defray some of the costs of the needs assessment. And each town had to choose this as a priority option at the COG because each town gets a request for services they might want through these funds. Um, so each town did that which demonstrated the commitment by all three towns to pursue it. So what you're seeing in the request is the twofold approach of the needs assessment first at 17.5 and we might be able to, and so this was finished by before we found out we were gonna get funds. Um, the twofold approach is 17.5 for the needs assessment and 25,000 as an estimate for the feasibility. Now, question question for everybody, and I guess this comes down to uh, we have not for sure here. I I believe that we're still reviewing buildings in town. Is a senior center existing senior center going to be the building that's going to be the senior center, or are we going to take a look at that church? and say it'd be more cost effective to renovate that church and fit a senior center there. And, and I think, I think I in the long the run, Saturday. you know, part, part of the, the first step of the study, the first step of the study of finding out what people would like in a senior center. And then the second part, before we jump into a second part, I think the town needs to determine what they're going to do with those two buildings if you know if anything and i i think that needs to be determined and i think the building committee uh is working on that with obviously several groups and i think we need to give them a little time before we jump in and focus on 
one building. I, I think that this almost goes the other way. I think that we need this study to be able to help the town decide right, what we're going to do. I so I, the, yeah, the first step does make sense, Mark. <clears throat> I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep in mind that the GRLA study and, and Jeff, you had mentioned this earlier. There is a meeting on Saturday at 10 that TBAC, the Building Advisory Committee, is hosting for further discussion about use of the buildings. And it, the conversation may have more, and I haven't looked at the agenda in the last couple days, but um, they do want to take this time to evaluate and really discuss with the town what to do with some of these buildings. The GRLA study has recommended certain things based on their evaluation for the senior center and for the church. And the last Correct. meeting, there was a significant conversation about that at the TBAC meeting on the 13th. So Correct. there's gonna be follow-up information. The intent of this request is to get the ball rolling on what senior services should be. And then since GRLA has recommended that the senior center be preserved, um, what that looks like in terms of, and I'm, I'm Switzerland on this, I'm just relaying information, what it would look like, the feasibility piece of this would be, what would that look like in terms of a redesign and reuse? Because before you redesign anything, you need to know what services you need to deliver and the best um, functional use of space to do that delivery is, is really how John Pachurik explained it to me when we talked it through. Yeah, no, no, uh, and I do, I do understand that. And uh, obviously, though, let's not forget that 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 company, uh, when they did that, they laid out several options, and they did. options for both of those buildings was to uh, to demolish. And I'm not saying that I'm not advocating for one or the other, but I think that I think the town needs a real deep discussion about this on how we're going to go about it. But I agree with you as far as in Mark, as far as the first step, and I said that earlier, do an assessment of, of the needs of the, the town, the people, of what they'd like to see in a senior center. So I agree we're all on the same page with that. I just don't want to push this too quickly as far as when it comes to the actual physical buildings without that. And so, work but keep being in mind that. If we have to pull the trigger on a feasibility study and we don't have any funding, um, because I don't know, Julie, I'll shut up in a second, Julie, but one thing that I would say is DLTA funds have not been approved yet. So we don't know what we're playing with right. for all three towns to support the needs piece of it. Um, but the feasibility piece, if the project is approved as a needs assessment and feasibility, then funds whether they got reduced or not, those funds could be used towards the next step. Because when, especially when you're pursuing grants, if you don't have a shovel ready plan, it's really hard to get funded. And there could be funding out there. But I think one of the reasons that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Julie, one of the reasons TBAC was pushing forward with taking the information session out to people was to get some idea of what they thought should happen, right? Yes. <laughs> um, the meeting, so the meeting last week was the GRLA report on their assessment of the physical conditions of the buildings. The meeting this coming week is um, the Western New England University um, survey, we did a town survey about a year ago looking for people's opinions on both on sort of senior center services, but mainly on disposition of buildings. So the um, Tim Versalati, who helped facilitate the, the, the survey, is going to go through those surveys results and present them. Um, and then it'll be another open forum to get people's feedback and opinions. That's the plan for this Saturday. And then based on all of that input, um, TBAC will be meeting to um, make a recommendation to the town, I guess. Um, we'll see. And so when we mention a needs assessment specific to senior services, it's 
more in depth. It's a deeper dive into what seniors from the three communities would like to see as services provided through a center. Right, exactly. And then just to say what you already said, based on those needs, we can then start looking at the space we have available and decide what to do. With right. And if that means reusing portions of both buildings, you know, tearing down the, again, Switzerland on this, however that looks, I will say that it's gonna be expensive. So the town's gonna to wanna to pursue any grant avenue we can, but if we don't have a shovel ready project, we can't move forward with a grant pursuit. And that's where the feasibility piece comes in. Denise? Good question. Um, how are you defining seniors? Just curious, what age? I mean, you know, but what is it? ARP defines it when you're you, you reach 50, you start getting stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how. I know, I know, it's a long time ago. But so, how are we defining seniors? 50, 55, 65? No, I, mean, I would say in your 60s, but don't quote me because I haven't delved yeah. that deeply into it. Because that makes a huge difference on a needs assessment. I know. Huge. I know. The, the letter talks about residents 60 and older. But I don't know. They they don't they don't talk about the study specifically. But that's kind of like in the introduction to this indicators. Thanks. Well, I'm a senior, and I have no idea how to answer the question <laughs> of what I would want in a senior center. I have, I have never thought of going to a senior center. <laughs> Maybe I should, and but you know. But see, that's the thing, Jack. I've had this conversation before because Ashfield was part of a three town senior center as well. And I think that was the biggest conflict when this, when anything came up, cause they were doing the same thing, um, was who would actually go. And right. I heard a lot of back and forth about that. So it's an opportunity to figure out whether people will respond. Yeah. I, I live next to someone who's very active in one. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all over. And yes. you know, that's why I think this study would be great because we can we can get some real data. All right, so uh, moving along to um, the uh, senior center roof, that's that's definitely a placeholder because we don't know we, we don't know if that that was what center. John and I both said. <laughs> But we wanted to, I was asked by the board to throw it out to you guys. So that's why you received it. All right, so we'll put that on the, uh, on the spreadsheet in, in some future year and uh, just so it, that it's- So do you want me to identify in a separate column just functionally, because I'm trying to figure out the hold versus the not hold. Are you at a point where you're asking to make, to add a column where you have a, a, a quote unquote hold? Or do you want to wait until later in your process? Just, I would right. like to know so I know what I'm looking at. Honestly. I think we can wait until later in the process because we, you know, we do have our own, we do have our own spreadsheet our, that, that's been ongoing over the last few years. And well, that's what I'm asking. If I'm going to add columns, I'd just like to know so I can do it. You know, start adding those things in. I imagine there's going to be columns, forget. yeah, columns added. I, you know, it's kind of a fluid thing. So, I kind of made my own spreadsheet today because I was getting so confused and I, you know, just three columns, but obviously it has to be more complicated than that. No, I'm just asking because in the past you had the 21, I'll just frame, I'll phrase from last year, you had 21 requests and then the recommendations. And then after special town meeting, we did an update that showed what was funded, but previous iterations had notices, notifications like tabled next to that particular thing in a, in a, in a separate delineation. That's all I'm asking is when should I right. start trying to delineate that for everyone? Right. And then we had uh, four years of expected, right. of, yep. of expected, requ uh, expected projects. Right. So, yeah, uh, Casey, on those hold items, we usually decide those towards the end where okay. we knew that they might be coming down the road, but we didn't have to act on them immediately. Right. And we kind of. Okay. So when asking. we get closer, you'll just tell me to, to add, start yeah, adding that column. To, 
we kind of try to figure out what year they might go into. They might, might make sense to put them into. and Also what we can afford. Which is another, which is another, it's always a big question in my mind. How much can we afford? That seems to be a slippery, uh, it's always a slippery question. And um, so anyway, I, that, I think that's another discussion. So the next thing on the, uh, on the uh, request is the SCEMS uh, parking lot um, uh, expansion and the SCEMS exhaust system um, uh, request, uh, 25,000 for the parking lot and 30,000 for the exhaust system. And I think we, we kind of touched on this at some point and it seems like uh, SCEMS, has, SCEMS has retained earnings to pay for this. They have a separate account. It's based on the rental income that we receive. Right. And so last year we created the account and then put the money into the account. And we can expect an influx of those, those funds every year right. um, to support these types of projects that support that function, the operational function. So there is a need to add some paving to the area around the building. And the exhaust system is actually, now that towns are subject to OSHA, it's a new requirement that we didn't necessarily, we weren't necessarily able to in, input at the time the building was built because the OSHA was in flux at the time. That year was when they were just getting to the point where they were deciding that towns were gonna be subject to OSHA. So I don't think it was a planned item, but now that OSHA is in effect, we need to add that as a protective measure. So, and I think it's something they sh they should have anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, if they have to run those those um, ambulances inside the building, sometimes, mm -hmm. then they they shouldn't be filling the building with diesel fumes. So. Right. Jack, I, I see these as as pretty straightforward requests. Yeah. Uh, you know, we could have Zach come in if if people had questions. Uh, on these two, but as oh, far I think as the exhaust I think it's so system, straightforward unless unless fairly straightforward unless other members have questions about that. No, nope. that that was my thought too. Yeah, I don't think we need Zach for for those two. Okay, so then the so then the last thing on the on the list is the capital stabilization fund, which is. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that's a that's a contribution to the uh, capital stabilization fund that was established what two years ago. Uh, about about three years ago. And and how much is in that fund now? Must be. Oh, uh, you just added two hundred fifty thousand to it in October. Should and that number isn't adjusted. That's just a legacy, what I did as a legacy. So the number itself was carried forward from the request that I had in, from the year before. I think I was told the intent was to get to a million dollars. You're, I wanna say, I think right we're around, around 800. I was, yeah, we're, I think we're around 800, Casey. That's what Maybe I think Maybe a too. little bit yeah. over. And the intent was try to get to to uh, a million in that fund. So when we have some of these big projects that we don't have money for on an annual basis, if we have to come back to that fund for the capital, it'll be there for us. So I guess that ultimately that's something that um, we we may recommend, but ultimately doesn't it go to the finance committee and the select board to decide ultimately how much? Right. How we, much they... we, right. As a committee, we can make that recommendation, but it also has to go through finance committee, and it also has to go through uh, the select board, and it also has to get approved at uh, 
the annual town meeting. Right. So, and normally what we do is we kind of see where we're at towards the end and determine whether uh, it's appropriate to ask for the 250. And it doesn't have to be 250. Right. That was right. just a number that we looked at to try to get us to that million dollar mark over basically over a five, six year period or whatever, four or five year period. I'm sorry, I don't know what's in there now. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'll see if I can find it in the next couple minutes. It might be in a report. Last year, last year, Casey, I remember off the top of my head, it was a little over 600. And then a uh, special town meeting, I believe, after uh, approved another uh, 2,500. I think you're right. I, I want to say we have it. Well, the thing is, is if you're looking to get to eight, for instance, if we had 850,000, just for argument's sake, um, if you're looking to get to a million, then maybe the request gets adjusted based on whatever it takes to get there. That's whether, right. depending on what the other draws on the budget are, because capital is just one piece of this. We're gonna see, we haven't received the school's budget and it's still very much in flux because there's things happening on the federal level and on the state level that are mitigating the time frame that we have a final budget. Right, and I agree with you, Casey, because that's why I said earlier, we usually wait till the end to take a look and see if it's even appropriate to request or not. So, okay. Jack, there was, there was two other things. One, one the, the library here, and it happens to fall in FY22. Uh, obviously, there's no request there, but they, because of the COVID, obviously the state put this off. So we just kicked that 8 million into uh, FY2023. I think so. I think it, so, because it seems like it's not going to happen this year. Right. Well, we're it, not it sure. Might, it, right. It might not happen this year. And even if it did, it would be after after the annual town meeting. So right. we'd have to go to a special town meeting for it anyways. Well, and it might so be. So you would want to kick that into the next fiscal year, 23? Well, it probably would happen in the next fiscal year, right? Right. That would, that would, to me, that would make the most sense. So that would clean that up a little bit. That's actually what Candace, so I had, I had, in the end of that packet, I had sent you a couple of emails that Candace and I exchanged because I asked her um, right. what we could expect for time frame. So last year they put the program on pause. They're going to revisit it, but my impression was it would probably be more beneficial if it happened in 23 depending on where the town falls in the list. And Candace wasn't really sure where we fell in the list. So she's thinking it might, it might happen in 23 if they only choose, for instance, three projects and we're number five on the list and we have a more likely shot in 23. Okay. And the other, the other thing I wanted to discuss and we can discuss it now because we're in open meeting here is that uh, we all received, I believe, an email is blind copied, so there is no uh, open meeting violation as far as response to the uh, Frontier Regional School capital request. That was yes, the last I thing I sent a blind carbon list. copy. Yeah. Right, and Casey, thank you very much for uh, extending that question and receiving a response. Uh, I would like to have uh, uh, Trevor, according to the response, is a representative of that committee. And I more or less understand the response, but I still do have some questions. And I think we should have Trevor in at some point just to review that and uh, get some clarification. So that way, that way, 
the entire public will be able to understand it, or if the public doesn't hear those responses, we'll have uh, responses that we'll be able to provide to the public if we are questioned about that. Because I know I uh, have heard from some people that there's a little confusion as far as some people were under the impression that this, what they're trying to uh, do here, this was not the way it was presented at annual town meeting. So I, I think we just should uh, maybe have Trevor in and just a little clarification so we don't run into a problem down the road when we discuss this and vote this. Casey? Can I just ask when it was voted? I didn't get a real good frame framework for that in my head. When this ha when the vote was when this was presented to town meeting, I should say. I believe it was last year. Okay. At the last last year's annual town meeting, I believe is when that took place. That's when they created uh, the. Uh, that's when they created the capital improvement committee for Frontier. Because Frontier never had a capital, uh, a capital budget. And so with the assistance of FERCOG, and I can't remember the gentleman's name right off the top of my head here. Joe Markarian? Yes. I know who you're talking that, about. <laughs> right. And uh, they went through and they worked with a school committee and some of the select board members and decided that they would establish a capital improvement committee for Frontier. And so when they presented it though, uh, to, to the towns, I think from what I'm hearing from the public, and I'm not saying a ton of people, I'm saying a few people that they had a, a different understanding of how this was supposed to work, so. And I just thought if we did some clarification, it would help for us and everybody else moving forward. Okay, so would you like me to see if we can get Trevor to, and I don't know what his school committee schedule is. Um, his school committee meetings are on Wednesday, so I don't, I'll have to put the ask out, but do you want me to ask him to attend next Wednesday at 530? Well, Jack, I don't want to speak out of turn. Uh, would that be appropriate? I know we're going to be asking Kevin. Right. So uh, I don't know how how much time do we need with Kevin? A half an hour, forty five minutes, an hour. I, I don't know. Well, my guess with Kevin is there's two items there, and and one one could take a little time because of the the asking price and the other one could take a little time uh because it has been discussed before and it's another another uh request so right, but we also have new members who might want to, who might have questions that exactly weren't in you know they weren't around they weren't on the committee last year so right i don't yeah. know you could I don't know, we could maybe ask Trevor for like uh, like uh, 615 maybe and and Kevin at 530 and Kevin at 530. Okay. Do you want me to or, copy you on those email requests? Yes, please. Yeah. Or Jack, could we or could we do vice versa if time worked out better for them? Sure. Trevor sure, showing we, up at 5.30, so. Sure. Sure, if you let me know, Casey. Okay. Um, um, but there, there's, ac and there's actually another request, I think, which is the, um, the town common. Correct. So, so. So last year there was a town common RFP request for forty thousand dollars, and then this year there's another request for fifty-five thousand dollars. And is or is that a request? Do we have another request for that? And we don't. 
because that was again that's the confusion about that's what you need every okay. year and, and that I was have, actually on the existing schedule and i don't i don't know i don't have any memory of what the fifty five thousand dollars is supposed to be for so that would be another question for trevor because he was kind of the the lead on that Right. right. And I don't have that documentation. So yeah, I see I, I don't either. See, that's 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 why I was mentioning the paperwork, Casey. It's kind of kind of and I know you got short. I would have passed here. it along if I had had it, Jeff. Right. Just no, because I, I didn't understand. know it was being looked at either. Right. That's what I'm saying, Casey. I know you you got caught in the middle, so I'm not again. I, I understand, but I, I'm just trying to say that's the importance of paperwork because if you remember, we go back two years and 40,000 was approved for the common two years ago, 40,000 was approved last year. So there's 80,000 there. Uh, I don't know if any or, you know, has been spent at this point. Yes, there has. Yeah, I, they, I we thought have, there was some. contracted. But, yeah, we contracted right. with an engineering company to start that process um, of, because the town common ad hoc committee has been working on it. So we're right. working with Berkshire Design. Right. But that's why, and I agree with Jack, I, you know, as, as far as the 55,000, once again, that was a number just thrown out there that could be anticipated cost, but not really knowing what it was going to be used Detail. for. Okay. And I, I think I'd like to know what happened with the 40,000 for the RFP last year. What was the, what came out of it? What was, what came out of that? Once the money was appropriated, the town common ad hoc committee met and discussed um, talking to a designer mm -hmm. and recommended that the select board engage a designer to review what what could be done with the town common. And did and they so, do that? Yes, they did. We're working with Berkshire Design now so on Berkshire. that design project. Oh, okay, so but Berkshire Design hasn't completed that. Hasn't. No, they're actually in process of work of, oh. of doing the design pieces to that the the design elements within the contract. No, oh, okay. All right, so um, I don't know what else do we uh, do. We have anything else to discuss tonight, or do we want to? Someone want to make a motion to adjourn? And uh, uh, quick question: Do we know if we have anybody from the school committee that's going to be joining us? Well, is the school as as far as a representative? You know, oh, Ken... that was Ken. That was Ken, and is Ken. Ken said that he, Ken is the representative from the school committee. And okay, so he, he had said that he was, he was going to join this meeting tonight and he obviously did not, but. Okay, I, I just didn't know if anybody heard if he was or wasn't going to. I, I took that, it, that he, the fact that he responded and said he was coming, that he was, he was it, so. Okay, and one last thing. And I know I know Denise is just joining us, but I'll throw this out. We still haven't we still do not have a secretary as far as minutes. Well, that's a good point. And Jack, I don't you know, you trying to run meetings plus do minutes and that I think that's a little too much. Yeah, it would it would be nice if someone else would volunteer to uh to do the minutes. And that's why I was wondering if Ken was going to be involved or not here. Well, we don't. I could I, rotate them for the time being. You could nominate Ken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One of my colleagues tried to do that to me last week. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I'll do the, I'll do them again this 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 week, and then uh, I don't know. Everybody think about it, and maybe we can. Uh, that, that's a good idea. Maybe we could just do a rotation. 
Hello, Rachel. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I'm just not too sure who, who we have on the committee for sure yet, and I just don't think it's it's right to have you stuck with running the meetings in minutes also. And just maybe just, just volunteering. Thought. No, I'm not volunteering. Oh, oh, oh. If you rotate, then you you spread it squarely no, around I've, to all I've, the committee I've members. Done enough, I've done enough minutes Jeff, and meetings Jeff, and everything for the last five, six years. Yeah, I'm Jeff agreed to, to come on, on the committee if he button. didn't have to do any of those things. That was the uh, that were the qual that was the qualifications. So yeah. So anyway, I don't know. I mean, I have it down anyway, so it's I kind of have a procedure. So, you know, I just uh, you know, it, I don't do the voluminous minutes that I used to do. I used to really get into it, but not. I, I can't anymore. So, right, and I don't think you know. And the a need for that, the meetings are recorded anyway. That they're. I was going to bring that up, Jack. They're they're recorded anyway, so I don't think we need to go into. I was, I, was, minutes. I was wondering if there was some kind of software that we could feed the uh, the audio <laughs> into some kind of translator that would just make a that would make a uh, uh, a written transcript copy of it. Yeah, a written transcript. That that question's come up before. Yeah. Um, the recording. So the governor's requirement for remote meetings predicates that we have some written some form of um, reflection of what's discussed, but the public record still requires eventually that these minutes become paper, like official. So, um, and you know that there's, there's some discussion about how in-depth minutes have to be. Right. And a lot of committees treat it like, this is the comment, this is the vote, this is, this is the right. discussion item, this is the vote. Um, my only comment to all of that is in 10 years, if somebody's looking to figure out why you made a certain decision, if there's no discussion on it, it's very hard for them to discern. Right. But I understand the, that abbreviation is how you get through the minutes themselves. So we do have the recordings for now. Um, and what could happen is if Another, so if you did, for instance, want to rotate, take, you could go back and read the minute and watch the meeting and take those minutes afterward as well, because we post these to the website, the recordings. Casey, quick question. Uh, how long before you post those to the website? 24 hours, generally. We usually post the recordings within 24 hours. That's okay. the requirement. I've had to do a couple of transcripts, draft minutes for lack of a better term. And we try to get them up within 24 hours. Yeah. So if I have to type okay. something. Right, no, I, I was just curious to make sure that if, if somebody did that, they'd have time to do the minutes for the next meeting, especially for holding weekly meetings. So one thing that I encountered Monday night, because I forgot to hit record. This is why Alex it can be, Alex's presence is so helpful. Because Casey forgets to hit record. So luckily, the member of the personnel board that takes minutes was taking notes at the time. So she cleaned up her notes a bit. And that's what we published on the website as the draft of what was discussed. Um, they don't, again, if Jack's going to, for instance, if Jack is taking very Streamline minutes, that's fine. You're reflecting the discussion topic. That's all that's really required. But it's recorded. That's the good. So next Wednesday the 3rd, we're starting at 5.30. I will ask Trevor if he can come at 5.15 and have Kevin come at 5.30. 6.15. I'm sorry, 6.15. 6.15. Trevor at 6.15, right. Kevin at 5.30? Correct. Okay. Okay, Jeff? so, yeah, Denise? 
Yeah, um, I know I'm not official yet. I'm assuming that no one else on the planning board is going to want to do this. So by default, I'll be <laughs> probably voted in, which is fine. But is there anything that you can send me that will be would be helpful to get me up to speed with some of this? Any documents that you have? I can send you the packet that I put together, Denise. That would be great. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and um, I'll send you the the um, the information I have on those on that uh, um, that uh, mini excavator. Mini excavator. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was already oh. I was already googling that and checking that out online, but that would be helpful too. <laughs> and what's your email address, Denise? Denise Mason at Comcast .net. Okay. Thanks. So does someone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn, Jeff. Second. Second, uh, was that Skip? Mark, was that sorry. Mark, Mark. Mark Brennan, second. <laughs> I, I, was, I was looking down. Okay, all in favor? Aye, Jack Davey. Aye, Jeff Upton. Aye, Mark Brennan. I skip Sobieski. All right, so we're adjourned at 